hello. Welcome back to the Twilight Rewrite, where we rewrite Twilight. Speech therapy works. My sister Sally sells seashells at the seashore. That one used to really kick my ass when I was five. Anyway, there's a playlist if you want to catch up, but I never ever do that whenever a YouTube video tells me to. So we've been taking some creative liberties. Jacob is a girl. Someone else is a girl. Who was that? Eric? Erica. Charlie is openly in love with Carlisle instead of leaving it in the subtext like Stephanie likes to accidentally but definitively do. Lauren is a vampire hunter. Bella is a girl's girl. Bella's always carrying a knife. Bella hates Edward. Bella might kill Edward. We haven't quite decided yet. And with that explanation, there's no room for confusion. You're ready to hop in. Let's get to it. As always, we are working with Novel Pad today. Link in the description. Okay, where'd we leave off? What a stupid lamb I sighed. What a sick masochistic lion. He stared into the shadowy forest for a long moment, and I wondered where his thoughts had taken him. Straight to hell. Why? I began, and then paused, not sure how to continue. He looked at me and smiled. Semicolon sunlight glinted off his face, comma, his teeth. That feels so familiar. Did we already edit this part? Or did she write that sentence twice? His face, comma, his teeth feels like I saw it in a dream. I don't like it now either. I feel like we didn't edit this. He murmured with a practiced inflection. That had to be me. What a sick masochistic lion. Retweet. Why? I began and then paused, not sure how to continue. He looked at me and smiled. Sunlight glinted off his face, his teeth. Yes. Tell me why you ran from me before. His smile faded. You know why. No, I mean exactly what did I do wrong? I'll have to be on my guard, you see, so I better start learning what I shouldn't do. This, for example, I stroked the back of his hand. Seems to be all right. This also feels so familiar. Did I do that thing where I like read through and don't edit the whole anyway he smiled again you didn't do anything wrong bella it was my fault let me go give my dog a piece of bacon or something <sighs> so hard being a parent he smiled again you didn't do anything wrong bella it was my fault but i want to help if i can to not make this harder for you well he contemplated for a moment it was just how close you were most humans instinctively shy away from us are repelled by our alienness i wasn't expecting you to come so close and the smell of your throat he stopped short looking to see if he'd upset me okay then i said flippantly trying to alleviate the sudden tense atmosphere i tucked my chin no throat exposure it worked. Semicolon. He laughed. No, really. It was more the surprise than anything else. He raised his free hand and placed it gently on the side of my neck. I sat very still, the chill of his touch a natural warning, a warning telling me to be terrified. But there was no feeling of fear in me. There were, however, other feelings. Am I having deja vu or did we already read this? Or does Stephanie write the same scene over and over again? You see, he said, perfectly fine. My blood was racing and I wished I could slow it. Sensing that this must make everything so much more difficult, the thudding of my pulse in my veins, surely you could hear it. The blush on your cheeks is lovely, he murmured. He gently freed his other hand. My hands fell limply into my lap. Softly, he brushed my cheek, then held my face between his marble hands. Be very still, he whispered, as if I wasn't already frozen. Bronze hair, more human, blah, 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 blah. Listening to my- No, we've definitely read this, but did I edit it? As immobile as stone, a carving under my hand. Did you guys know that he's like stone? Okay, so we did read this. I did not edit it. Now we have to actually work. Yuck. I think I'm going to take out the whole, what did I do wrong part because it's insufferable. He stopped short. Okay, then. No throat exposure. Brrr. Ah, but should we keep any of this? Um, okay. Watching the sun and wind play in his bronze hair more human than any other part of him. The only thing on him that looked human. I think that that slightly changes the tone to where it's like, he's an alien and like a slash scary way. Retweet. And then what if we take out the Y and just have him look at her and smile looked at me and smiled you know, comma sunlight glinting off his face his fangs tell me why you ran away god i i don't want it i'm just gonna ka-chow okay that's gone you see he said perfectly fine my blood was racing and i wish i could slow it down Sensing that this must make everything so much more difficult, the thudding of my pulse in my veins surely you could hear it. The blush on your cheeks is lovely, he murmured. Hmm. Yuck. He gently freed his other hand. My hands fell limply into my lap. Softly, he brushed my cheek, then held my face between his marble hands. It's a lot of hands and cheeks. The blush on your cheeks, he murmured. He held my face between his... He took... My face between his marble hands. Be very still, 
he whispered, as if I wasn't already frozen. Slowly, never moving his eyes from mine, he leaned toward me, then abruptly, but very gently. He rested his cold cheek against the hollow at the base of my throat. I was quite, I'm going to take out quite, or just say I couldn't move. I was quite unable to move becomes I couldn't move. What's going on? I listened to the sound of his even breathing, watching the sun and wind play with his bronze hair, the only thing on him that looked human. And then what about... The more time I spent with him, the more I saw the alien, the statue, the demon, wearing human clothes. With deliberate slowness, his hand slid down the sides of my nose. I don't like reading this. Shock. How far into this are we? How many chapters are in Twilight? Because we're about to get to chapter 15. 24 chapters. Cool, so we're halfway there and it's only taken four years. I think I've moved twice since then. The first episode was in my apartment, wasn't it? Honestly, I hate having a series that has run this long because normally if I watch a video I made four years ago, I'm like, oh my god, and I delete it. Can't really do that here. Kind of really full sending whatever shitty little personality I had at the time. Sorry. I shivered and I heard him catch his breath with his hands and paws as they move to my shoulders. Um, I think I'm gonna leave this mostly as it is because it is naturally quite creepy. There's no skimming my collarbone. He came to rest with the side of his face pressed against my chest, with the cold of his face pressed against my chest, listening to my heart. Ah, he sighed. I don't know how long we sat without moving. It could have been hours. Eventually, the throb of my pulse quieted, but he didn't move or speak again as he held me. I knew at any moment it could be too much and my life could end so quickly that I might not even notice it. Um, did I say that Lauren would send a drone in this chapter? I couldn't make myself be afraid. Yeah, you can. I couldn't think of anything except that he was touching me. I scanned the sky for Lauren's promised drone presence, but she was nowhere in sight. He finally released me. It won't be so hard again, he said with satisfaction. You'd think she's do she has to be doing this on purpose. Stephanie, if this is on accident, that's amazing. If you haven't seen the ContraPoints video about Twilight, number one, you absolutely should. Number two, one line that stuck out to me was, it's like reading someone's diary which it is. Like, it feels so invasive. I feel like I've said that before. It's like, like I get secondhand embarrassment with some of the shit that Stephanie's saying to us right now, which again, is incredible. Was that very hard for you? Not nearly as bad as I imagined it would be. And you? No, it wasn't bad, dot, 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 for me. He smiled at my inflection. You know what I mean. I smiled. What? What's the inflection? Here. He took my hand and placed it against his cheek. Do you feel how warm it is? It was almost warm, his usually icy skin, but I barely noticed for I was touching his, for I was touching his face. Something I dreamed of constantly since the first day I'd met him. ka -chow. Don't move, I whispered. No one could be still like Edward. He closed his eyes and became as immobile as stone, a carving under my hand. I moved even more slowly than he had, careful not to make one unexpected move. I caressed his cheek, blah, 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 blah. I dropped my hand and leaned away, not wanting to push him too far. ka -chow, that's gone as well. He opened his eyes. They were hungry. That kind of works. Not in a way that made me feel fear, but rather to tighten the muscles in the pit of my stomach and send my pulse hammering through my veins again. It was in a horny way. I wish, he whispered, I wish you could feel the complexity, the confusion I feel, that you could understand. This is such a droning virgin allegory, the entire series. On and on and on and on. Raised his hand to my hair, then came, tell me. I don't think I can. I've told you, on the one hand, the hunger, the thirst, that deplorable creature that I am, I feel for you, and I think you can understand that to an extent, though he half smiled. This is an insane amount of punctuation. And I think you can understand that to an extent, though he half smiled, as you are not addicted to any illegal substances. You probably can't empathize completely. Girly, what? But. His fingers touched my lips lightly, making me shiver again. There are other hungers, hungers I don't even understand, that are foreign to me because I'm a good boy. I may understand that better than you think. I too am horny. 
I'm not used to feeling so human. Is it always like this? For me, I paused. No, never. Never before this, for I am a virgin. He held my hands between his. They felt so feeble in his iron strength. I don't know how to be close to you, he admitted. I don't know if I can. I leaned forward very slowly, cautioning him with my eyes. I placed my cheek against his stone chest. I could hear his breath and nothing else. Okay, we're gonna boop, 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 boop. Um, I'm going to take all that out because I don't like it. This is enough, I sighed, closing my eyes until marriage. In a very human gesture, he put his arms around me and pressed his face against my hair. You're better at this than you give yourself credit for, I noted. I have human instincts. They may be buried deep, but they're there. (laughs) We sat like that for another immeasurable moment. Semicolon. I wondered if he could be as unwilling to move as I was. But I could see the light was fading, the shadows of the forest beginning to touch us, and I sighed. All right, anyway, get rid of that. You have to go. I thought you couldn't read my mind. It's getting clearer. I could hear a smile in his voice. He took my shoulders and I looked into his face. Can I show you something? He asked, sudden excitement flaring in his eyes. Show me what? I'll show you how I travel in the forest. (laughs) Yay, the zoomies. The zoomies are here. We turn into a bat, I asked warily. Okay. We could kind of put this up here, so like... The light was fading, the shadows of the forest beginning to touch us. Roaming my face. What if we say... It's getting late, he said. Yeah, I said quickly, I should probably get home. Can I show you something? First, he asked, sudden excitement flaring in his eyes. I'm going to take that out because, hmm. Show me what? I asked cautiously. I'll show you how I travel in the forest, he saw my expression. Don't worry, you'll be very safe, and we'll get to your truck much faster. His mouth twitched up into that crooked smile, so beautiful my heart nearly stopped. Up into a, that crooked smirk into a what's a more evil word than crooked sinuous no twisted we could say twisted that's kind of cute into a twisted or what if his mouth twisted his mouth twisted into a smirk will you turn into a bat i asked warily will you turn into a bat i asked casually searching the sky again for any sign of Lauren. He laughed louder than I'd ever heard. It made me flinch. Like I haven't heard that one before. Right, I'm sure you get that all the time. Come on, little coward. Climb onto my back. He he just spent how long trying to convince her that he's a big scary man and he's a monster. I just look what out on me. And now he's like, you chicken. Oh my God, girl. I waited to see if he was kidding, but apparently he meant it. He smiled as he read my hesitation and reached for me. My heart reacted. Even though he couldn't hear my thoughts, my pulse always gave me away. He then proceeded to sling me onto his back with very little effort on my part besides when in place clamping my legs and arms so tightly around him that it would choke a normal person. It was like clinging to a stone or a rock of some sort because he's just like a rock to a cliff. All right, I'll leave the rest like that. And you gotta leave a semicolon every now and then. Otherwise, are we co-writing with Stephanie Meyer? No, we're drowning out her voice. And I would never do that to her. I'm a bit heavier than your average backpack, I warned. Oh my God. Ha, he snorted. I could almost hear his eyes rolling because he's made out of rocks. I'd never seen him in such high spirits before. How much did Kristen Stewart weigh when she played Bella, do you think? 105? You're never gonna lift this. Ha, he snorted. Um, he startled me, suddenly grabbing my hand, pressing my palm to his face, <laughs> inhaling deeply. <laughs> Stop! She wrote that. That's not me. She wrote that. He startled me, suddenly grabbing my hand, pressing my palm to his face, and inhaling deeply. That's regular. Okay, so we got some warning that we're going to be startled twice. Um, what if just... His grip wrapped my wrist, yanking my palm to his face. He inhaled roughly. I'm going to take out his dialogue because that's crazy. And then he was running. If I'd ever feared death before in his presence, it was nothing compared to how I felt now. He streaked through the dark, thick underbrush of the forest like a bullet, 
like a ghost. I'm gonna change ghost to wraith. Just because I feel like raids live in the forest and I think that they're sexy. There was no sound, no evidence that his feet touched the earth. His breathing never changed, never indicated any effort. But the trees flew by at deadly speeds, always missing us by inches. Again, I don't have to change anything. This is just a little scary on its own. I was too terrified to close my eyes, though the cool forest air whipped against my face and burned them. I felt as if I were stupidly sticking my head out of the window of an airplane in flight, and for the first time in my life, I felt the dizzy faintness of motion sickness. Then it was over. We'd hiked hours this morning to reach Edwards Meadow, and now, in a matter of minutes, we were back to the truck. Exhilarating, isn't it? His voice was high, excited. He stood motionless waiting for me to climb down. I tried, but my muscles wouldn't respond. My arms and legs stayed locked around him while my head spun uncomfortably. How long is this chapter so far? Just this scene alone is 4,500 words. By the way, in novel pad news, I think I've shown y'all before that I have this little summarize button, which summarizes your scenes. And then if you go over here, you can download the outline and you'll have all your scene descriptions in a row. And this is just a me feature because I'm special, but word on the street is it's about to be a public feature. I think I want her to spot the drone now. In my dizziness, I still caught sight of a tiny drone, drone dripping beneath the tree line. Drone dipping. I was just talking so much good shit about speech therapy. In my dizziness, I still caught sight of a tiny drone dipping beneath the tree line. And felt instantly safer. Bella, he asked. I think I need to lie down, I gasped. Oh, sorry, he waited for me, but I still couldn't move. I think I need help, I admitted. He laughed quietly, then gently unloosened my stranglehold on his neck. There was no resisting the iron strength of his hands. Then he pulled me around to face him, cradling me in his arms like a small child. He held me for a moment, then carefully placed me on the springy ferns. How do you feel, he asked. I couldn't be sure how I felt when my head was spinning so crazily. Dizzy, I think. Put your head between your knees. I tried that and it helped a little. I breathed in and out slowly, keeping my head very still. I felt him sitting beside me. The moments passed and eventually I found that I could raise my head. There was a hollow ringing sound in my ears. I don't think we need him being sweet. I guess that wasn't the best idea, he mused. I tried to be positive, but my voice was weak. No, it was very interesting. Ha, you're as white as a ghost. No, you're as white as me. A wraith. I think I should have closed my eyes. Remember that next time. Next time, I groaned. He laughed, his mood still radiant. Show off, I muttered. Open your eyes, Bella, he said quietly. And he was right there, his face so close to mine, his beauty stunned my mind. It was too much, an excess I couldn't grow accustomed to. <laughs> sure thing, girl. Um, Taking all that out. I was thinking while I was running, he paused. About not hitting the trees, I hope. Silly Bella, he chuckled. Running is second nature to me. It's not something I have to think about. Show off, I muttered again. He smiled. No, he continued. I was thinking there was something I wanted to try. And he took my face in his hands again. I couldn't breathe. He hesitated, not in the normal way. The human way. Not in the normal way, the human way. Not the way a man might hesitate before he kissed a woman to gauge her reaction to see how he would be received. Perhaps he would hesitate to prolong the moment, that ideal moment of anticipation, sometimes better than the kiss itself. Edward hesitated to test himself to see if this was safe to make sure he was still in control of his need how do you know how do you know that's what he was doing i was gonna say this is so 50 shades of gray but like right and then his cold marble lips pressed very softly against mine what neither of us was prepared for was my response blood boiled under my skin burned in my lips my breath came in a wild gasp my fingers knotted in his hair clutching him to me my lips parted as i breathed in his heady scent immediately i felt him turn to unresponsive stone Take a shot every time she says stone. Don't. <laughs> uh, beneath my lips, his hands gently but with irresistible force pushed my face back. I opened my eyes and saw his guarded expression. Oops. That's an understatement. It is so not chasty girl of you. His eyes were wild, his jaw clenched in acute restraint, yet he didn't lapse from his perfect articulation. He held my face just inches from his. He dazzled my eyes. <laughs> Should I? I tried to disengage myself to give some room. His hands refused to let me move so much as an inch. No, it's tolerable. Wait for a moment, please. His voice was polite, controlled. I kept my eyes on his, watched as the excitement and then faded and gentled. Then he smiled a surprisingly impish grin. There, he said, obviously pleased with himself. Tolerable, I asked. He laughed aloud. The str I'm stronger than I thought. It's nice to know. I wish I could say the same. I'm sorry. He's going to tell the church. 
You are human, after all. Thanks so much, I said, my voice acerbic. He was on his feet in one of his lithe, almost invisibly quick movements. He held out his hand to me, an unexpected gesture. I was so used to our standard of careful non-contact. I took his icy hand, needing the support more than I thought. My balance had not yet returned. Are you still faint from the run, or was it my kissing expertise? How lighthearted, how human he seemed. As he laughed now, his seraphic face untroubled. He was a different Edward than the one I had known, and I felt all the more beside by him. It would cause me physical pain to be separated from him now. We've all been 16. I can't be sure. I'm still woozy, I managed to respond. I think it's some of both, though. Maybe she'll let me drive. Are you insane? I protested. I can drive much better than you on your best day, he teased. You have much slower reflexes. I'm sure that's true, but I don't think my nerves or my truck could take it. Some trust, please, Bella. My hand was in my pocket, curled tightly around the key. I pursed my lips, deliberated, then shook my head with a tight grin. Nope, not a chance. He raised his eyebrows in disbelief. I started to step around him, heading for the driver's side. He might have let me pass if I hadn't wobbled slightly. Then again, he might not have. His arm created an inescapable snare around my waist. He WWE slammed into the ground. Bella, I've already expended a great deal of personal effort at this point to keep you alive. I'm not about to let you behind the wheel of a vehicle when you can't even walk straight. Besides, friends don't let friends drive drunk, he quoted with a chuckle. <laughs> Alcohol. I could smell the unbearably sweet fragrance coming off his chest. What? Does it smell like a rock? Drunk, I objected. You're intoxicated by my very presence. He was grinning that playful smirk again. I can't argue with that, I sighed. There was no way around it. I couldn't resist him in anything. I held the key high and dropped it, watching his hand flash like lightning to catch it soundlessly. Take it easy. My truck is a senior citizen. Very sensible, he approved. And are you not affected at all? I asked, irked by my presence. Again, his mobile... Mobile? Noble? Is this supposed to be noble? Mobile feature. No, no. I, that feels weird. <laughs> anyway, his noble slash mobile features transformed. His expression became soft, warm. He didn't answer at first. He simply bent his face to mine and brushed his lips slowly along my jaw, from my ear to my chin, back and forth. I trembled. Regardless, he finally murmured, I have better reflexes. Well, that's lame. I was thinking while I was running. Okay, whatever. Felt instantly safer. Um, ba -bum -bum. Uh, should I leave a kiss in? What if there's like an attempt? Silly Bella. I'm gonna do 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 do. No, he continued. He took my face in his hands again. I couldn't breathe. He hesitated. Not the blah 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 blah. Getting rid of that. And then his cold marble lips pressed very softly against mine. Mm, you hear it all that. Bile boiled in my stomach. His touch was gentle, but I could feel the threat just beneath his palms. He yanked away. His eyes were wild. His jaw clenched in acute restraint. Mm, I'm going to take out an acute restraint. His jaw clenched. Put this there. His hands refused to let me move so much as an inch. Get that gone. <laughs> Kept my eyes on his. I sat still and waited. There, he laughed aloud. I'm stronger than I thought. It's nice to know. Um, take all that out. He was on his feet in one of his lithe, almost invisibly quick movements. He held his hand out to me in an... Mm. I exhaled slowly and tried to get control of my racing heart. Hopefully he reads my fear as excitement. Though I think he likes to see a little fear in me. I'm gonna take that out. I think it's some of both though. Maybe you should let me drive. Um, I stumble. I stumble to the driver's door. Maybe you should let me drive, he says. He said. Um, I don't know. I can drive better than you on your best day, he teased. You have much slower reflexes. My hand was in my pocket, curled tightly around the key. He raised his eyebrows at me. I went to step around him, and his arm created an escapable snare around my waist. Bella, I've already expended a great deal of personal effort at this point to keep you alive. I'm not about to let you behind the wheel of a vehicle. 
when you can't walk straight. Drunk, I asked, feeling agitation through my nervousness. You're intoxicated by my very presence. I could have snorted, but instead I relented and handed him my key. Very sensible, he approved. I have better reflexes. Okay, I'll see you next time for chapter 15 in potentially three or four months. Have a good day. Drone dipping. I was just talking so much good shit about speech therapy. I'm just kidding. My impediment was for SH and TH because I have a hole at the top of my mouth. I can't drink anything carbonated. Um, what was I talking about? This is not a very focused day. I am not on my hashtag grind.